This by hell beats running on a balcony. Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Thank you very much for tuning in. And as you can see, we're out on the trails in the deep forest, not just on the gravel roads. And oh boy, this brings me so much happiness. Before we get into the main topic, which I want to share with you, just want to say a few fit little things. Well, if you look at that, it's just started to snow again. We're in the middle of April and it's snowing again. I guess this is actually the first winter because normal first winter never actually came. So I just wanted to say a big thank you from my behalf. There's been so much support, so much kindness, so many messages such a great community we have here and i'm very grateful for that and trust me i don't take it for granted so thank you to each and every one of you i do try my best to get back to everyone because i respect your time as well Talking about time, as you know, I have a lot more of it on my hands and feet now. A lot more running, and obviously that means I'll be making a lot more YouTube videos. So if you want to help me through this period, all I'm gonna ask is like a real simple thing. Like just hit the subscribe button. It'll really help me. And during this time where I've got kind of uncertainty and no job plans, I'm really trying to make this YouTube thing really work for me. Like me asking you to hit subscribe, uh, it's not only so I can get a bigger following, it's so I can help out more people as well. It's not always just about me, as you probably know by the type of person that I am. I'm not just in it for myself, with everything in life, not just YouTube. I'm here to help, uh, so it would greatly help me if you hit the subscribe button. And even if you don't wanna watch the full video, just hit play, go make a cup of coffee, whatever you're doing, and leave it playing in the background. That would help me a lot. That leads me swiftly on to if you have any type of specific content that you want me to make, if you've got any questions for me, like what is my pre-run routine or what do I always eat after a run? What's my favorite session? Shoes I'm wearing, whatever it may be. Or even if it's personal life questions, how did I end up living in Helsinki? Then feel free to ask them. You can drop them by DM or down below and I'll be more than happy to answer them in a video. With that being said, Let's move on with the video, do some running, and catch up with all the other stuff. perfect but today's topic basically is to do around my knee but not only my knee how my knee can help you or what I've learned and what I want to share with you so I've been dealing with some kind of knee issues since my last ultra which is ultra Pyrenees in October for about four months I was struggling with this real kind of like either patella tendonitis which is right underneath the kneecap or quadricep tendonitis which is obviously just on the medial side just on the inner upper of the kneecap. I get really stiff and really tight and it would really hurt and it just didn't make running that fun for me. So I eased off, went to see a physio, that's really important. They helped diagnose and gave me some great advice. So 
So what I came to learn is that my knee issue wasn't actually a problem with my knee. We did, you know, osteopath, we did orthopedist, we went for an MRI and we had ultrasound. So we got the works and the knee was perfectly fine. Sometimes you need to think of where it hurts is not necessarily where the problem is. There is something else going on around it. So look at the muscles around it, look at the alignment around. So for me, what was actually one of the biggest problems is my hip flexor mobility on the left hand side. And not only the mobility, but there was just a lot of tightness and obviously a lot of not activation in the glutes and maybe over activation in the hip flexor, which then once it, when you're running and it tends to tense up, then it gets tired and then obviously pulls on all these things lower, lower down on your body. So my knee issue was actually a hip flexor and glute activation issue. So I came to learn some really good tips and things that have really helped me. And now if I do my activation exercises before every run, actually, if you can see like now I'm running really fine. I'm been a I've been able to get some consistent running in uh, week by week over 50 kilometers, plus a lot of cycling, lots of other sports, lots of walking. And the best thing is for four months, four months, for four weeks, I've been, uh, you know, enjoying every single moment. And that is what is the key thing. I'm pain free and running with joy. A really valuable lesson that I've come to learn. And that one thing that I wanted to share with all of you. So I'll get home and we'll go through some of those things that have helped me. And just maybe even if those things that don't help you later on, just the very thought of to not think about where the pain body resides, but think about, you know, what else might be happening within the body. And obviously also go and see a physiotherapist. I'd fully recommend that. And there's that excellent saying, work smarter, not harder. And by no means am I out of the woods yet on this whole saga. Well, if you look pretty close, but uh, you know, I'm continuously working towards having more better kind of feeling. And also I'm gonna continue growing, continue evolving, and I'm not gonna stop at just feeling okay. One last thing before we shoot off home, this by hell beats running on a balcony. <laughs> go through some of those exercises that have been helping me through these last four months. They may or they may not all be translatable to, you know, whatever you're dealing with, but I think they're all just generally good things to keep in mind if you have a tight hip or you want to get a little bit more mobility and movement in that area. And look, as a runner or to be honest, anyone doing any sports or if you're not even doing any sports, it's pretty good to get a little bit of mobilization, get a little bit of uh, stretching and get a little bit more sort of less tension in that zone. First and foremost, one of the most simple and basic of movements. <laughs> the deep squat has been really great. It's really nice just to sit in this position and try and hold it. And obviously like all the time, so you're not letting your knees go over your toes. And a good way that has been taught to me is that you can push out and push your bum backwards when you're going into the deep squat and just sit there. And if you're not too comfortable with that, another great way to do it is get a pillow or something, put it against the wall and do it whilst you're sitting against the wall. That was the way I started doing it and then as I progressed, I actually got a lot more comfortable and I recognized and felt such a big difference. Something also that I love doing, it's not necessarily hip flexor stretch, but it's good at getting the quad stretch. So just gonna sit back on your legs like this and nice straight back and your toes aren't tucked in, they're kind of out like that. Can you see? Here you can. It's one of the stretches I do like morning lunch, 
night time, before the run, after the run. And don't spend too long, you know. Just do what's comfortable for you. If it's not comfortable, then don't do it. Obviously, talking about hips, it wouldn't be hip exercises without doing a hip flexor stretch. So this is the best one I have found that really, really nice, gets really deep and you can play with it to sort of you know, go even deeper or just keep it nice and light. So this one, what we're gonna do is have a nice 90, 90 degrees. So what I mean by that is here 90 degrees, here 90 degrees, and here 90 degrees. And what you want to do is keep your hips kind of tilted this way, rather than leaning forwards and rounding out with the back. And you just push, drive the hips forwards so you will your knee will come forwards a bit so a good way to make sure that you're not rounding out is just put your hand on your stomach off the where the knee is bent or with the opposite arm just above you like this and bend it and lean to the opposite side and it really accentuates that stretch there so if you want to make that a dynamic stretch you can go like this and kind of just gently push forwards. In general, I'm holding it for about 20 seconds on that push. And like with most things, always try and keep a good balance. Even if one side is one problematic, always try to keep the other side also equally looked after. But this next one, it might be a little bit tricky to show you, but what you're gonna need is some type of ball. I would start off with something quite soft, like a tennis ball, and then maybe work your way up to a lacrosse ball, or something like this. It's got little knobbly bits in. This was bought from Decathlon, so nice and cheap. I think it was probably like four euros or something. But what I want you to do with it, let's see. So with the ball, what you're gonna do, at the top of your femur bone, you're gonna put it right behind that. So what is the femur? Well, it's the leg bone. Quite a funny angle here, but to find that, one way I always find it is just go like this with your leg, and then move your leg, and you can feel the bone where the fem top of the femur will be. So what you're gonna do is place the ball at the back of that, so where your bum is, and then just lie down on it. And rather than having your leg straight, have it flexioned, what you'll do is find the spot on the ball right at the top and the behind the femur and you'll find like a sensitive bit. Just lie on it 30 seconds and let that myofascia, the muscle, release. And if you can't find the spot, just roll around a little bit until you find a tight spot and just relax and let that release. And the final thing is this video here by Tom Merrick. He's a, I think his channel's called Bodyweight Warriors. It's actually quite a good and interesting channel. Like, it's a lot of things that I don't actually do, but he is super knowledgeable on the body and how to get the body working in different ways, mobility-wise and strength-wise. And I found some really interesting videos there that I've been practicing. And this 12-minute follow-along hip mobility uh, routine is super amazing. And every time I do it, I can always feel way more mobile in my hips. It's a little bit tough, yeah, especially for us runners, but I would really recommend it. Give it a try, do it a few times, and you'll really see you'll feel like a lot more mobile. Does it translate into your running? I'm not sure, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty certain that it will help you. From that video, there is one exercise which I do tend to do on a regular basis every time before I go to bed, which is this one right here. So I sit with my legs like this. It's the giving birth pose, and we go just rotating like this from side to side and just hold it. And what you want to do here is you're stopping your body, this torso from rotating. You're trying to keep it facing forward. As you can see with me, <laughs> I'm obviously not the best, but it's not about being the best. It's about giving it your best. Easy to follow along and uh, really great YouTuber as well. So this one here is like a good way to kind of get like that hip extension movement for when you're running to get that real good drive. As you can see, you when you get to the top, hold it for two seconds 
and you get the full hip extension. And you can use a block like this. Well, you meant to use a step, but unfortunately I don't have one. But improvisation, I'm sure you can figure something out. There we go, there are some of the things that have helped me with my hip flexor and how I've got some, some better hip mobility, I believe, and has helped me in my running. So if you've got any exercise or anything, then do drop some down below. Always happy and always fun to hear what everybody else is up to. I hope the video's been entertaining for you. You got some value from it. I've enjoyed really making it, and uh, as you can see, just out on an evening walk. But have a great evening, day, morning, night, whenever you're watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one, probably tomorrow. Definitely tomorrow. <laughs>